We've all felt the impact of the coronavirus. Our phones are blown up, the news feeds, everything we look at, it's filled with uncertainty and our minds have so many questions and it's unlike anything we've ever felt before. And I'm, I'm the kind of person that I always try to figure things out and so I uh, just wanted to give you a couple initial thoughts and then talk about how we can fear less during this time of unbelievable uncertainty like we've never faced before. The first thing that, that runs to my mind is this very thing over here, this very first thing. I think that we are captivated by the coronavirus. I, I think our minds are, are, are captivated. I think they're captured. I think, I think they're dominated uh, by the coronavirus. It's, it's, uh, it's everywhere we go. We're checking our news feed every hour, and it's changing every single hour. It's changing, just constantly changing and constantly changing. It almost feels like instead of us standing on a solid surface, we're standing on the, 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 the sand of, of, of shifting change, and we're trying to get our sea legs, and we're trying to get our head around all that's taking place. It just, it just seems overwhelming. We're scrambling to forecast. We're scrambling to figure out what does the future look like. And, and here's what I've noticed with problems. A lot of times when, when problems come in my life, I, I end up looking at a problem like a microscope. You know, I, I, there's a problem and I zoom in and I try to look at it from all angles. The, the problem is the more that I look and I zoom in at this problem, the more fear, the more, more worry, the more panic I have in my life. And I start to, and the problem with worry and fear is that it exaggerates our problem. So, so let me just ask you a question before we jump into the message, and that is this. To what degree has the coronavirus captured your attention, captured your mind? Uh, another thing that I, I think the coronavirus is not the only thing that is spreading. Um, I, I think the coronavirus is not the only thing that 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 can spread like a virus. I think that is what is very true. I think the second thing is this. I think that fear is contagious. So, so Eric, what does that look like? Well, you're talking to your friend on the phone and they just said, hey, did you hear that schools are canceled for, for how long? And what, what happened at your job? Oh, no. And I, I'm so convinced that fear, it is so highly contagious. The definition of contagious is this idea. It's to spread from one person to another by direct or indirect contact. I think fear is extremely contagious and it spreads at such a rapid rate and I think fear is spreading rampant all over our cities, our nation, and I think even the world. I mean, everywhere you go, everybody you bump into, everybody, every conversation is talking about the coronavirus. There's so much panic. I think there's almost more fear over this. And here's what you have to understand, church. Here, here's what you've got to get. Here's what we, you and I have to grasp. I want you to grasp this. It's 2 Timothy. It says this. It says, for God, God has not. God has not. What has God not done? God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear that you are feeling, it is, not, it, is, it is not from God. The spirit of fear that comes crashing on us, that is, that is not from God. A another massive problem that I'm, that I'm wrestling with right now, a massive problem that I, I think we're facing is that, and this is a new problem, probably in the last 40 years, but never before have we ever had instant access to all the information of the entire world. Think about that for a second. You and I have instant access. We just scroll on Facebook. We see every kid that has cancer. We see every person that has the coronavirus. Not just in our United States or in our friends. We have instant access to every tragedy in the entire world. Is our hearts meant to carry, absorb, put that kind of weight? Think about that. Now, there's a lot of great things that we can learn from that. But my concern is the impact. What a negative impact that's going to have on our hearts. Because I don't think our hearts were meant to carry that kind of weight, the, the tragedies of the entire world. And here's, the, here's another thing. What you focus on is what you're going to feel Notice Romans chapter 8, it says this. It says, for those, Romans 8 verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh, 
That means those of us that are just living according to the ways of the world, we're living horizontal, if you will. Those who live according to the flesh set, make make a decision. They set their minds on the things of the flesh. But Christians, we live differently. But those who live according to the spirit, hey, they live a different way. They set their minds on the things of the spirit. If you and I just set our mind on coronavirus and, and, and just living horizontal lives, I think it's going to impact us in such a negative way. A little boy by the name of Brandon, just a day or two ago, was commenting. He was saying he was watching the news, all of the fear, all of the worry, all of the panic. And here's what he said. It just made me so scared. How many of you, how many of us, are scared. We're, we're living. We're living in fear. We're just scared. Eric, what's going to happen tomorrow? And, and what about? And, and here's where it gets really bad is where, where our minds start asking the endless loop questions. Endless loop questions. What is that? Endless loop questions are those questions that we ask that there is no answer, and our minds just spiral and spiral. Endless loop question. Eric, what's happening next? What's the next tragedy? How long? How bad? It's endless loop. There is no end. And my concern for us as your pastor is that my concern is for your heart. How is your heart? When you start asking these endless loop question that there is no answer. It just feels very toxic. And, and what we notice in the Bible is that over and over and over again, over 600 times, God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Let not, let not. That means it's a choice. Let not, Jesus said, your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. And my question is, if God mentions it that many times, don't you think that he is trying to get our attention? He's saying, hey, church, I just want you to know that there is a, there is a cliff over here, that there is, a, there is a hole over here, and he puts up the caution tape of warning, caution, pay attention. Other people stronger, better, smarter, godlier than you have fallen into this trap of fear and worry and panic. Therefore, he says it over and over and over again and again. Let not your hearts be troubled. Don't don't focus on just the things of this earth. Set your mind on things above. He's driving our attention. He's saying, so Eric, what does that mean? Does that mean that I don't pay attention to what's happening in the news? Does that mean that I'm not a, uh, at what point do I turn a legitimate issue or a legitimate turn? What at what point is that a legitimate concern is what's that line between I step over into now I'm living in fear? I mean, what's the line, Eric? Eric, how do I know if I'm living in fear and panic? How do I know if I've tipped over from I'm just a genuine, responsible, concerned individual, which we should be? But what, let me ask you a question. Is your mind being dominated? Or what's dominating. Where is your mind drifting toward throughout the day? Here's what I want you to do, church. I want you to monitor. I want you to pay attention to what you're focusing on. This next week, pay attention to where your mind is drifting. Because here's what I know. I know that the problem with fear is it's almost impossible to see in the mirror. You know, it's interesting. On Wednesday, March 11th, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a pandemic Now, the definition of a pandemic is a prevalent disease over the whole country or the world. Church, I'm so concerned that we have a pandemic of fear. That there's a pandemic of fear that is spreading all over the world. That there is a spirit of fear that is so engulfed and enslaved and captured us and the world. With, we're just filled with so many. And worldwide, this fear virus that's just captivated us. So, so Eric, what's the vaccine? Eric, what's the vaccine to tame this toxic fear virus? So what is it? 
what do I do? Eric, okay, I get it. Okay, I think I might have maybe tipped the scale a little bit. I might be there. Okay, so Eric, what's the vaccine? Hey, Eric, what, what is it? Here's the question we've got to ask. Here's the first question we've got. We've got to be, we've got to ask some hard questions. Here it is. You ready? Are you infected with the fear disease? Are, are you a carrier of the fear virus? Really? I don't want the Sunday school answer. I want the real, I want you to really think, I want you to search your heart and ask yourself the question, and not just you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to our good God and say, search me, God, and know, me, know my heart. Here's what I'm concerned about you as a church. I'm concerned for your heart. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Hey, God, am I living in fear? Hey, God, am I consumed with, have, have I, do I, am I infected with the fear virus? Am I enslaved to fear? Search me, God. Test me. Is fear really controlling my, my life? Are, are my concerns just gone haywire? Am I living in fear? Uh, personally, I had to, you know, just yesterday, I think, or maybe even today, uh, I began to ask myself this question, only to find out that I was living in fear, only to find out that, that I was struggling with this. And I wasn't so much concerned about the the coronavirus, although I have a daughter with special needs, and the last virus that she got actually shut her bone marrow production, and she had to have a blood transfusion, fusion, and it was awful, and so that's a very real possibility. But with all of the changes and all of the pressure and thinking about caring for the church and all of the meetings and all of the preparation, I've just been consumed, not by the coronavirus, but by the impact, the domino effect. And I had to, I literally just got on my knees I said, dear God, I've been consumed with fear. I've been consumed with worry. Would you forgive me? Because the Holy Spirit convicted me. Because here's what God said. God said, hey, Eric, there's a better way to live. There's a better way to live. And that's what I want for you. Are you living in fear? Are you living in worry? I love the Bible because it's so relevant to every tragedy, every disaster, every time. It is timeless truth from God's word. I, li I love Isaiah 41. It says this. It says, so do not fear. Why, Eric? So do not fear. Why? Here's what, here's what it says. Here's what God's saying. For I am with you. Think about this. If you know Jesus, you have a good heavenly father and he loves you and he is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the one who speaks the world into existence and he loves you and he cares for you and he says, so do not fear. Why? Because God Almighty will be with you and do not be dismayed. Why? For I am your God and I, almighty God, I will strengthen you and help you. Can we just think about that, can you just let that seep into your hearts? Here's what the almighty maker of heaven and earth, your good heavenly father, if you know him, he just said, don't be afraid. Why? Because God almighty is with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What if that moved from here to here? What if we took a three by five card and we wrote that verse down and we throughout this day, instead of paying attention every 30 minutes to the news feed, what if we pulled that verse out and we started to meditate? So do not fear for I am with you. God, I'm so thankful that I have a heavenly father. He is with me. I am not alone. You are not alone. God almighty will help you and he will walk with you. You know, in the Bible, every, the, the, the answer every time to do not be afraid, do not be afraid, the answer every single time in the Bible is that God says, I will be with you. So the answer to the fear question, God has already answered it. And God says this, I will be with you. I will be with you. Even in the darkest of valleys, 
and even in the most severe situations, and even to the point of death. Now, that verse does not say, that verse right there that we just looked at, it did not say that don't be afraid, you're not going to get the coronavirus. It didn't say that. It simply said that God Almighty would be with you. Second thing I want us to remember is that God Almighty will be with you. God Almighty will be with you. Even until the point of death, if you know him, that's why every funeral that I go to, here's a verse, Psalm 23, that stood the test of time. It says this, even though David said, I walk through the darkest of valleys, or the valley of the shadow of death, as some versions say, even though I walk through the darkest of valleys, I will fear no evil. Why will I fear no evil, Eric? For you are with me. And then he goes on to say that your rod and your staff, they are with me. And they comfort me. See, here's the point, that God Almighty is with you and he will help you. Know, what if every single day of our lives that we said, God, no matter what happens to me today, no matter what happens tomorrow, God, you've promised that you will be with me, you'll walk beside me, you will lead me, you will guide me. There is never a moment of a day that, God, you won't be there. And God is waiting. He is a good heavenly father just waiting for you to invite him in. Hey, God, God, my heart's overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And when I am afraid, I will trust in you. So every time you become afraid, say, God, would you help me? God, I'm overwhelmed. I'm starting to become fearful about this situation. God, I give this to you. And here's what I want you to be. Some of us, honestly, are living like a practical atheist. Living like a practical atheist. We are living as if there is no God. Friends, church, it is essential that we become more God-focused. It is essential that we become more God conscious. Instead of being corona conscious, we need to be more Jesus conscious. And this excessive reasoning and excessive, our minds are running and running, trying to figure everything out, that will wear you out. And you're never meant to, you're, those are endless loop questions that you're never gonna have an answer to. Number three, here's what we need to do. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Notice this next verse. It says this. It says, Hebrews chapter 12, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Hey, Jesus knows, Jesus knows what it's like to suffer. That's why we need to fix our eyes. Fix our eyes, lock in. Jesus, would you captivate my mind? Hey, church, more than ever before, that your friends, your neighbor, your families need us to fix our minds on Jesus, to be grounded in him so that we can actually shed encouragement and light, that we can be hope and light in a world that is overwhelmed by the tragedies that are all around us and the questions and the fear. The world needs us to step up and to keep our eyes fixed and focused on Jesus, to be captivated by him. And here's what you say. You say, Eric, that's really nice. Fear not. That's a nice little bumper sticker and fear less. But Eric, how do I do that? Like really? How do I do that? How do I live this out? I'm trying, but I'm just overwhelmed. Eric, how do I do this? Here's what I think the trick is. Meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word. Notice, notice what Psalm chapter 1 verse says. It says this, Psalm chapter one, it says, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, that's the Bible, and in his law, this is God's word, he meditates. You say, Eric, what does that meditate? Fold my legs and light some candles, I mean, have some music? No, meditate means to simply think about. But he th meditates day and night on God's word. So what's the byproduct? What's the fruit of someone who spends time meditating, thinking about on God's word? You know, you know what the fruit is? Notice this. He shall be like a tree planted, planted, grounded, rooted. Where is he rooted by? Planted by the rivers of water. And those waters come up sometimes and the storms come crashing on that tree. But that is an oak tree because he is planted. Why? Because he has planted his life in God's word. He is grounded. He is meditating. He's thinking about 
God's thoughts. If you want to think God's thoughts, you've got to read God's word and meditate God's word. He's like a tree planted. How many of you want to be a tree planted? How many of your friends and neighbors need to see somebody that's planted in this world of fear? Will you be the one? Will you step up? Will you say, you know what, God, would you forgive me because I've been living in fear and may I meditate on your word because God, I want to be a tree that's planted that's going to bear fruit for those around me. Notice he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does, he shall prosper. He shall prosper. I don't know about you, I just don't want, I don't want to get through the coronavirus and the corona craze and the corona fear. I just don't want to get through it. I want to press into Jesus. I want to be planted and grounded in my life bearing fruit, not the fruit of the flesh, but the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. But that's going to come when I meditate on God's word. I love Isaiah 26 and verse three, it says this. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace. How many of you need perfect peace? You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. He's not looking at the problems like a telescope. He's lifting up and he's looking towards heaven. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. What are you trusting in? What are you trusting in? Are you looking to the news for some hope and some, are you looking to the news for some, some light at the end of the tubble, tunnel? Are you trusting in our good God? Would you bow your heads with me for a second? I'm just going to ask everyone, would you just, would you just bow your heads for, for a second? Let me ask you just a couple questions. Number one, how are you doing as it relates to fear? Where does your mind just naturally drift? Number two, are you fixing your eyes on Jesus? Hey, I strongly encourage you to pick one verse and write it on a three by five card and then throughout the day, I want you to pick that verse up and I want you to read it. Maybe you start with Isaiah 26, three. You will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And you read that and you think about that and you read that a hundred times. And you watch the result of what will happen to your, your spirit and your heart. And some of you here, you've never trusted Jesus. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've never trusted God as your Savior, I want you to know that God so loved you that he sent his son to die on the cross and to shed his blood. And by placing your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you've never done that, just pray, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for dying on the cross. Would you be my Lord? Would you be my savior? I give you my life. I want to trust you more. Amen. Church, just want to remind you that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God because he trusts in you. See you next week. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. Hope to see you next week.